So we're back to the restoration of the fine tapper here. So I think the first thing I'm going to try to tackle here is these plastic pieces. There wasn't many plastic pieces in the uh, assembly. But what I mainly want to do is try to get off this paint, this blue paint off these pieces. So I'm going to try a couple things and see if they work. So first thing I'm going to try is this. This is a diluted um, Simple Green HD. I think it's called Simple Green Pro solution diluted four to one with water and I've heard this stuff works pretty well for stuff like this so let's see how it no not really getting off that paint off that one all right so since the cleaners didn't work I think I'm gonna do a little test spot with the soy gel um, just to see if how it reacts with these plastic because this stuff will eat away some plastics One time I spilled this on some styrofoam. It actually ate a hole in it within a couple of seconds So if there's styrene in here, if these are styrene, I probably will eat it We'll do a little test spot here and then just watch a reaction And that way we can clean it off if we do start seeing something happen. So this piece right here, the handle, I think all the pictures I've seen, this was actually painted black. It was a different color than the rest of the unit. So you can kind of see some of that black paint on here. So thinking that I probably should take this, at least take this blue off. So normally I would do this with like a glue brush, but I uh, can't seem to find them. So it's a good thing about this stuff is you can actually just do this with your hands. This stuff is that safe. We'll let that sit for a little bit. All right, so it's been it's been around 10 minutes. So if there was a reaction, we should start seeing it now. And I'm not really seeing anything happen there. So I think we should be okay to go ahead and put some soy gel directly onto the handle here. So I tested it on this plastic right here and you can already see the paint bubbling up. And it's only been on there for like five minutes. So yeah, you can see it's definitely gonna work. So I'll go ahead and put some soy gel on these, these vent covers as well. So if we check up on our, uh, on our plastic pieces here, you can definitely see the paint there bubbling up. And there you go, it just comes right off with this soy gel stuff. So all we should have to do is just wipe it. Probably don't even need to scrub it off or scrape it off. Yeah, I'll tell you a little story about this soy gel. I first found out about it. I actually stripped the paint on an entire floor. I was I wanted to restore the uh, the hardwood underneath, and in order to sand it down, I needed to strip all this really heavy duty paint. And the only stuff that I could find that would strip it that was actually you know, not like a chemical weapon, was uh, the soy gel. So I bought several gallons of it and I was able to strip the entire floor. It only took about one application and then a couple hours later you just basically scrape it off. Alright, we'll go back to this piece again. See how ready it is. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm pretty happy with this. There's still a couple of blue spots in there, but it's not really that important to get them all. I'm going to add a couple drops of oil to these springs. So I think I'm going to, we're going to try to strip the blue paint off these pieces. 
So I'm not really sure. Not really sure if this is going to work. If it's going to strip everything or just the blue. But I guess we'll find out. Alright, so it's been about, let's say, 45 minutes. And we'll go ahead and uh, see how this, how this paint looks. So it looks like it is taking off a little bit of the orange, but not really that much compared to the blue. And for this one, I think we'll just kind of brush it off. Okay, so I think I'm going to take this fitting off. This is that cap that looked like a port for uh, grease or oil. Just to see what's under there. Looks like it's a 10 millimeter. Alright, so it looks like that is actually just a port to get uh, oil down into that bronze bushing. And it was totally filled up with uh, the bearing grease. And it probably shouldn't have been. So it's a good thing we took a look at that. Now I'm going to try to take the paint off these two pieces. And I don't know how much of the orange is going to come off, but probably enough that we're going to have to really repaint this, this housing right here. So what I'm going to go do now is just scrub these pieces down. Uh, just give them a bath. And we'll see how they look after that. I wash these off, and I pretty much got all the paint off in all the areas that I wanted to. Did notice a couple of interesting things here. Um, so it looks like this is the raw casting surface right here. But right here you can see it looks like they grind it away. The surface on both sides here so there must have been some part of the casting mold that was intended to be removed here and then same thing over here on this piece we have looks like a combination of you know angle grinder marks and raw casting marks there was definitely a lot of hand finishing going on when they made this it wasn't necessarily all done by machines because this does have all these rough marks on here, I think what I'm going to do is paint this this piece. Um, probably paint it pretty close to the silver gray color that it was originally. So I'll have to see if I can find a, a color to match this fine orange color. It looks almost like it's pure orange with a little bit of red in it, but... We'll see what we can find in terms of a, uh, a paint. So I am quite happy with the way these handles turned out in terms of getting all the paint off. So the only thing I'm going to do is actually just kind of polish them up a little bit with uh, some novice number two and number one. some number one on all right there we go I think that's about done for those we'll go ahead and uh, polish up this little brass cover with some uh, blue magic Yeah, I think that's that should be about good enough. All right, now we're gonna do some painting. We we'll hit it with this aluminum primer first. So 
So here are the results of the, the painting. I think it turned out pretty well. This is still a little bit tacky on uh, this orange because it, it was a different type of enamel than what I used for the other pieces. But So I used this uh, hammered silver for this piece. I think it turned out all right. So you can actually buy the, uh, you can still buy the handle that goes into here. And I found out that this is actually an NPT three quarter inch pipe thread, which was kind of unusual. I would have expected it to have been like a PG uh, type thread. Um, but I looked at the price of the replacement handle and it was anywhere between 70 and 85 bucks. So uh, what I just did is I, I found a piece of uh, scrap stainless steel as you can see, my machining skills are not quite up to, you know, professional levels. But I was able to, to build this and put some threads on here, and I ran a, a tap through here just to clean all these threads up. But everything fits pretty good here. So I think that'll be good enough. This is really just a support handle. So the next thing I'm going to try to do is repair these... Um, worn off insulation on on these terminals so it looks like all the wires are there it's just the insulation has been worn off or degraded in some way so I think all I'm going to do is put some new heat shrink on here and it kind of looks like somebody already did that at, at one point it could also be from just the UV Ultraviolet from the carbon brushes is actually degrading the wires. In the way that this is coming off, it kind of seems that way. All right, we'll heat up, hit it with some heat. So oh, it should be okay. I think I'm going to reuse this cord, but let's take a quick look at this uh, plug because it looks like it's been replaced uh, since the original cord. So we'll just make sure there's no funny business going on under here. Alright, it's a good thing I checked. That is not the correct way to terminate as lugs so we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and replace that <laughs> all right so I popped on some of these spade connectors from 1989 is when they were bought so I don't throw anything away all right that looks good okay so it's time to start reassembling everything. So I think I'm going to start with the field windings and the armature first, and then we'll hit the uh, gearbox part last. So first thing to do is to put the field windings in. So I got the field windings around the brush holders. So I think we'll go ahead and try to slip this into the housing. Go ahead and put the screws in to hold this assembly together. I didn't even worry about taking the blue paint off the screws. It really wasn't worth it. So we'll put a little bit of this grease on the bearing here. And then we'll try to insert it into the, into the housing. There we go. Here goes nothing. Okay, so we're just going to use a center punch 
to try to push this bearing in there. Now what we'll do is we'll connect the main housing. Make sure everything lines up. So we'll go ahead and pop the carbon brushes back in. And we'll pop the cover. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Before we continue, I'm going to hook up power directly to this and make sure you see everything spinning the way it should. Alright, so here goes nothing. Alright, let's try that again. <laughs> survived. Looks like everything's good. So next we'll, we'll put this uh, handle cover holder, whatever you want to call it, on. So now we'll start working on the handle. So we'll go ahead and put the cord grip back on. And we'll pop We'll pop the capacitor back in. So we should be able to put this, should be able to slip this switch assembly in now. Gotta get this back on. I had to switch this piece around. I had to go back to the video, teardown video. So now I think I have it right. Put the lower portion of the handle back on. Now it's time to try to get this gearbox together going to be some 3-in-1 oil. Add a little bit of oil here. So we'll go ahead and at least pre-pack this gearbox with some Lucas Oil bearing grease. Finally got these in here. It was a real pain in the butt because they all have to go in um, together. You can't, you can't put one at a time in just because of the order and you gotta get the order right. But I got them in there. So should be good to go to finish packing this with some uh, bearing grease. So next thing we'll do is we'll we'll put this grease fitting back in or this oil fitting. And then we'll add a couple drops of uh, three in one oil here. And we'll put this cap back on. The last thing we have to do here is put this um, to put this chuck back on. Alrighty, so I think we're done with the restoration. The only thing left to try is to make sure everything spins.
Well, I think that's going to wrap up this restoration video. So in the next part of the series, we'll actually try tapping some real holes with this thing. And it's probably going to take some practice. And I'll probably end up breaking some tabs, but we'll try to do it. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.